There's one thing that can't be denied about Scotland, and that's the rugged beauty of its landscapes, and the mystical charm that comes from its rich history. Therefore it comes as no surprise at all that with Michael Scott, we have what is said to have been a real-life wizard. We don't know much about his early life, having been born sometime in the 12th century, likely born on the Scottish borders. We can assume that given his travels, he came from a rich family, for Michael Scott would travel far and wide in the pursuit of knowledge all across Europe. Scott was what you might consider a typical wandering scholar in the Middle Ages, a man who, through extensive education, would learn Greek, Arabic, Latin and Hebrew, some of which he was even literate in. He was quite evidently a learned man, one who studied at Oxford University, where he surpassed his peers in mathematics and went on to receive a doctorate in theology. However, one of his keen interests was astrology and the grey area at the time between religion and science. It's his expertise in this area that would likely give him the wizard moniker, though it's the tales about him that would go on to contribute to this notion, as you'll see in a moment. Throughout his life, Scott would travel across Europe as both a teacher and also a translator, where he would translate many scientific texts into the desired language. In fact, he would be so gifted at doing this, that he would even attract the attention of Emperor Frederick II, who would invite him to his court, where the two bonded and established something of a close relationship. In fact, while in the company of Emperor Frederick II, rumours have it that he would demonstrate his magical abilities, going on to perform cures for the Emperor's ailments and that of his closest subjects. As Emperor Frederick II would have you believe, Michael Scott was also a seer, who could induce visions of coming events in one's future. Some have said that these visions were understood by Scott through his deep unrivaled understanding of the stars and astrology itself, but whether that's true or not is up to you to decide. Perhaps Michael Scott possessed an intellect that allowed him to view one's destiny simply by pondering on the alignment of the planets or stars, or maybe he was just lying and pulling the Emperor's leg. Regardless, his most notable evidential work is the trilogy he penned regarding astrology, alchemy, and the occult sciences, which he presented to the Emperor in the year 1228, although they were never officially completed. Scott's work was also described as being ahead of its time, as a recent study of a passage of Scott's writings revealed that he spoke about the phenomenon of multiple rainbows, a phenomenon that has only recently become understood by modern physics. Emperor Frederick II would look to Michael Scott for some of the biggest questions, whereby in a letter in 1227, he asked Scott a rather broad request, and that was to explain the universe. He would also go on to ask Scott a range of difficult questions, including the foundation of the Earth itself, the geographical location of heaven, what lies beyond heaven, the precise location of hell, and where God lived. He would even try to catch Michael Scott out, going on to ask him how far the moon was from the church in which he prayed at. When Scott gave him his answer, Emperor Frederick had the church roof lowered in secret. Upon confronting Scott with the new numbers, Scott simply explained that either the moon had gotten further away, or somehow the church had gotten shorter. The death of Michael Scott remains uncertain. However, a popular legend speaks of Scott foreseeing himself killed by a strike to the head. Therefore, he was said to always wear an iron cap to prevent his death. The legend has it that one day, he removed his cap in church, only to be struck by falling debris from the ceiling, where he'd die. The legends only seem to become more and more intriguing though. Some have said that when entertaining friends, Michael Scott would summon spirits to steal food from royal kitchens from around the world. Another legend has it that Ildon Hills in Scotland, which has three shapely summits, was once a large singular mountain, but that in a fury, Scott blasted magic at the mountain, halving it in size and splitting it into three peaks instead. Others have said that he had merely done this to show off his powers. A more insidious story revolves around the Lone Meg and her daughters, a strange stone circle similar to that of Stonehenge, located in northwest England. The Long Meg and her daughters is said to consist of 59 stones and is set in an oval shape, measuring 340 feet. It's generally accepted that this was created during the Bronze Age, 
and was merely part of a megalithic tradition. However, some believe that it wasn't formed until much later, during the lifetime of Michael Scott. Supposedly, Scott was summoned to England to deal with a coven of witches who were congregating in the area. Upon reaching the area, Scott met with the witches in a standoff at the very site that the stones now lay. A brawl with magic broke loose, but Scott was said to have single-handedly defeated them by turning them all to stone. According to this theory, Lone Meg is said to have been the main witch, known at the time as Meg of Meldon, and her daughters were merely her followers. Either way, if this legend is true, then what you're seeing in this picture isn't a set of stones constructed by ancients of the Bronze Age, but actual witches who felt the wrath of Michael Scott himself. On the topic of Lone Meg and her daughters, it's said that the stones, for whatever reason, cannot be counted in consecutive order. However, if one is able to count them correctly, and to count them correctly a second time after that, the spell which Michael Scott cast would be broken, and either the witches would return to our world, or it would bring about very bad luck for either the person counting, or the world itself. Another legend has it that if you walk around the stones whilst counting them correctly, and put your ear to the tallest stone, you will hear Lone Meg whisper. Long bones have since been uncovered at the site, leading some to believe that a giant once roamed the land, and was buried there amongst the stones. However, this has since been debunked, as researchers believe that the bones belong to animals. Michael Scott was foremost an astrologer, one whose work was so profound that he became a close friend and confidant of the Emperor Frederick II. But was his contribution only of the scientific nature, or was there more to his intelligence, perhaps something more mystical and not recognised by science? Was he able to predict the future, as legends say he was? Was he merely a travelling astrologer with a heightened sense of space, or was this merely a guise to hide the fact that he was indeed a powerful wizard? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.